Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel or shall I say I'm back to my channel. I know it's only been like five days or so but to me it's been like forever mainly because I've been extremely extremely sick for the last week. Uh, I've had a terrible ear infection which I'm still struggling with so I'm actually uh, having a huge dose of paracetamol right now in my system just to go through and record for you guys. So I hope uh, I will sound clear and sane <laughs> on that video. Nevertheless, if you're new here, welcome my dear. Please don't forget to subscribe to build our gorgeous community. And if you're already my subscriber, please don't forget to leave me a comment down below so we can chat as usual. Okay guys, so this is a highly requested video, but I also really, really wanted to do it. Uh, I'm gonna talk about patchouli. If you follow me for a while now, you probably know that I'm not a big patchouli fan. Overall, to me, patchouli is not my favorite note, especially I do not like the combination of patchouli and some sweet gourmandish notes uh, like um, famous Angel by Midler, Angel Muse that so many people rave about. These are really not my fragrances. I really, really don't like the combination of these two clashing. To me, it's clashing notes. Uh, so yeah. Nevertheless, uh, I've been very much surprised of how many patchouli-based fragrances I have in my collection. And I'm not just talking about patchouli-based, because most fragrances on today's market have some patchouli in them, because uh, the producers of the fragrances want to elongate the, the lasting power of the scents by adding patchouli. And sometimes, indeed, patchouli is not very prominent, it's very very toned down, you can barely barely smell patchouli in the fragrances. These ones actually are quite prominent on patchouli and I still love them which is very surprising. Uh, and what is more surprising, these fragrances have been in my life, in my collection for years and years. Some of them have been with me since I was 15. So I keep repurchasing them and if you don't love patchouli, keep on watching and if you love patchouli keep on watching even more because I'm sure you're gonna love these scents. Alright let's jump right in and let's start with a classic. As I said this is the one that has been in my collection since I was around 15 uh, when I got my first bottle and this is Chanel Coco Mademoiselle uh, Eau de Parfum. So this one is an absolute classic. Uh, it's a oriental sparkling perfume with a warm patchouli in the dry down and some vanilla. It's quite a sweet scent, uh, but it's very refresh refreshing, very classy, uh, very much on the floral side, which I also don't really love or appreciate in fragrances, but for some odd reason, this is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. So here you go, Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. So yeah, this is very fresh in the beginning. It starts off very zesty, very sparkling, then it gets to a sweet floral note. There is some rose in here, of course, and then it dries down to that warm, gorgeous, cozy patchouli with vanilla. Um, I don't know if it's because of the vanilla in here that makes it more wearable for me. Nevertheless, I absolutely love the scent and I highly recommend it. The longevity on this one is a beast. Uh, it also was featured in my most long-lasting perfumes in my collection, which says a lot about this one. Uh, the longevity is definitely 10 hours plus. So that's Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. Another one is a huge elephant in the room and, you know, people hate it because it's very much overhyped. But uh, even though I don't wear it anymore because of that fact mainly, I still believe that it's a gorgeously blended fragrance, uh, definitely collection worthy. And the longevity is amazing, and the scent itself is just a masterpiece. So this is La Vie Belle by Lancôme. Uh, some of my lovely subscribers recommend me uh, La Vie Belle et Cla a lot. And I did sniff it a few times uh, back in the day when I was in Sephora or something. Uh, the problem I have with the Ecla version is that they got rid of the most important note uh, of the scent 
that is to be, which is Iris. They got rid of that and made the scent a little bit more generic, I'll be honest. Uh, this one is a masterpiece uh, because of the Iris that's in here. It makes the scent very powerful, it makes it very sophisticated, it makes it a little bit powdery but still very much on the gourmand side. It's a beautiful fragrance, so uh, basically what it is mainly, it is a, a gourmand with iris and patchouli in the dry down. Very, very sweet one, but very classy in my opinion. The, the only problem with this one is that everybody wears it and I definitely love being on the um, a little bit more eclectic side and I don't like smelling like everyone else, so I don't wear it, but it's definitely a good patchouli fragrance. And the lasting power, again, it's, it's amazing on this one. So if you still don't have it in your collection, I think uh, you should consider this one. Yeah. Okay, the next one I want to speak to you about, it is very, very oriental uh, and very, very beautiful. And this is Hermès L'Ombre de Mauvais. And this is a strong vanilla balsamic fragrance with a patchouli undernote. So, to me it smells like a naked woman that just went out of the spa, if you know what I mean. Like you had your oils on. By the way, I love Ayurveda massages and to me some of the oils that they use, the hot oils that they use on your body smell a little bit similar to this one. If you get the vibe, you will know what I mean. Uh, so this is definitely an oriental vanilla. It's strong on the oriental vanilla note, but um, it's not too sweet. And the patchouli gets into the play with the labdanum. Uh, very ambery as well. It's mainly a uh, vanilla amber scent with the patchouli undernote and some labdanum. So gorgeous scent, very very sensual, very sexual even I shall say. Uh, to me it smells like, just like I said, uh, a naked warm skin after a spa massage. Beautiful scent. Uh, quite prominent on the patchouli as well. The longevity, I would say, it's like seven, eight hours or so. So it's very, very nice. So yeah, I highly recommend checking it out. I know it's very much underrated and it should be more loved, definitely. So that's L'Ombre de Mauvais by Hermès. Okay, the next one that I also absolutely love and have been loving for ages. I started this romance when I was... 15, 14 as well, even maybe less. And this is another version of this perfume. I don't have the original that I started with, unfortunately, which was Miss Dior Cherie. Uh, but this is the Miss Dior Eau de Parfum, and this is the 2012 version, which is very prominent on patchouli and bitter orange note. Gorgeous fragrance. Uh, I love it. It is quite similar to the Coco Mademoiselle. However, if you guys are debating between these two, I would say this one is definitely more floral, it's definitely more sparkling, uh, a little bit sweeter. This one, however, is warmer, even warmer on the patchouli note. Uh, it's like you would take the dry down of this perfume and took it to the top of this one. So basically the dry down from Coco Mademoiselle starts from the beginning in here. Then you get the bitter orange, it's a little bit more citrusy in that regard. And you get the rose. Ah, very, very warm, cozy scent. Also very sophisticated. By the way, I must say, I just sprayed the uh, Miss Dior over the L'Ombre de Merveille and the combination is amazing. I love my own surprising concoction of this one. If you have them both, you should try it, because it's amazing. It smells so good. Anyways, uh, longevity of this one is around 8 to 9 hours, I should say. Beautiful perfume, definitely warmer one, uh, but very, very appropriate for any occasion and any age, I should say. So that's Miss Dior by Dior. Another patchouli that I absolutely love, to me it's definitely more mature than the 
uh, Coco Mademoiselle or Miss Dior. Uh, it is Giorgio Armani C, Eau de Parfum, the original. So this one starts with Cassis Load. It also has some like car black currant berry note to it. Uh, it has rose and very, very strong patchouli. Uh, it's mainly rose patchouli scent. Very elegant, very mature, as I said. It's quite sweet. Definitely sweeter than Miss Dior or um, Coco Mademoiselle. Not as sweet as La Via Belle, so it's a nice, in the middle uh, kind of fragrance. Lovely for workwear, well, gorgeous for formal occasions. The longevity, I would say, it's around eight to nine hours. Same with the uh, Miss Dior, so very good longevity. I absolutely love it when I have a formal event. It's definitely the one that I would gravitate towards. So yeah, that's C by Giorgio Armani. The next patchouli I want to show you, it's not as prominent uh, on patchouli, but you definitely can smell it. And this is Valentino Donna. And I really, really like it. To me, it's not very prominent on patchouli, as I said. But, you know, uh, some people smell it definitely more than me. Uh, it's just that I don't get as much patchouli in here. This is also a rose scent, but it's a strong rose leather scent. So it's a little bit more unisex. It's definitely not sweet. Uh, it's the least sweet scents from all of the scents that I'm showing you today. Uh, so Valentino Donna is definitely a very, very uh, formal scent. It It is sexy, I must say. It is sexy in its own way, if it makes sense. Uh, it's rose, it's um, leather, it's iris again. So if you want a non-sweet, uh, very um, elevated, sophisticated version of La Via Belle, I think you should definitely check this one out. Because basically what this is, is La Via Belle stripped off any sugar note, if you know what I mean. Uh, this is rose, this is iris, this is leather, this is vanilla and patchouli, but there is no particular sweetness to it. Uh, so a very interesting scent, very elegant, uh, very, very sexy. It's also a sensual scent. It's a scent of a woman. Uh, there's nothing gourmand in here. Very, very interesting. Uh, some people say it has like a lipsticky kind of uh, scent to it. And I get that sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I don't. Uh, yeah, but it's mainly leather rose on me. Very, very interesting. Iris gives that powderiness to the scent. Gorgeous one. And the patchouli, of course, is, is there. So, Valentino Donna. The longevity, I would say it's around seven to eight hours. Okay, the next one is for all of my Oud lovers, and this one is Gucci by Gucci Oud. So back in the day, I was uh, a big fan of the original Gucci by Gucci. Now they, I mean, not now, it's, it's been around for years, but uh, they added in the Oud. So this one is supposed to be quite fruity. Uh, there's pear in the main notes and raspberry. Uh, and also very strong patchouli oud and oud, obviously. Uh, but to me, it's not a very fruity oud, definitely. And it's definitely not a sweet oud. This is more of a uh, dry oud. It has some freshness to it, uh, some herbal freshness to it, if you know what I mean. If you like that kind of note, and I, I'm sure it's thanks to the patchouli that it happens in here. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit herbally. It has that uh, fresh whiff to it, if it makes any sense what I'm saying. But I'm just trying to describe what I'm sensing the best way I can. So it's definitely a rose and nude combination, but it's not a typical rose wood combination that you would get. Uh, there are some fruity hues to it, but it's really, really not strong at all. I actually was hoping that Gucci Oud would be a lot more fruity and like sweet Oud, you know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I think it's the paracetamol kicking in. Whatever. Anyway, 
So it's definitely a fresh herbal oud with strong patchouli to it. Um, there are some fruity notes, as I said, but they're not prominent to me, at least at all. So yeah, beautiful oud though, beautiful. If you are into more unisex ouds, if you are tired of all those sweet gourmand dish ouds, definitely give it a try because it's very, very interesting. And considering this is a designer, it's a great blend. Uh, I know what I'm saying because I've tried many ouds and this is a very very good blend of oud especially for a designer house as Gucci. So Gucci oud definitely a good one. It's oud patchouli rose combination. That's all it is. And last but definitely not least guys I really really love this scent. I've been going back and forth with this one. Uh, first when I got it I think I got it in 2016. I, I think I was in Frankfurt then and it was just just as it was released I purchased it then I actually kind of didn't like it and then I came back to it once again and now I'm really really vibing with it and this is definitely a strong patchouli and this is a fruity fragrance and it's very interesting to me and this is YSL Mont Paris and I really really like it at the moment so this one is definitely fresher zestier uh, patchouli and uh, this opens up with a strong strawberry note there's also some raspberry uh, it's mainly a strong um, strawberry note, then it gets to jasmine, there are two blends of jasmine in here, and then it gets to the patchouli, which makes this scent much darker and much more interesting. If there was no patchouli in here, I can like assure you that I would hate it and I would never wear it because it would be the most generic fragrance on the market. It would be like the most boring strawberry with some jasmine leaves and that's it. But there's patchouli and this scent, thanks to it, makes, makes it a lot more interesting. Uh, the strawberry is a little bit darker from the beginning and it's very appropriate for the night out as well, especially uh, in spring and summer. So I would use it on a daily basis, hands down, but I think it's a great transition perfume that you can, you know, wear it during the day but elevate it during the night as well. So great overall fragrance uh it's way more girly way more flirty than the others that i just showed you it's definitely more like i don't want to say immature but it is kind of immature <laughs> uh, but still has a nice twist to it you know it has a kick it's definitely an interesting fruity fragrance and yeah uh, the longevity i would say seven eight hours still very good for a fruity fragrance and yeah, the patchouli is very prominent, but I really, really like it in that case. So that's YSL Mon Paris Eau de Parfum, the original version. All right, guys, I think that's it. I hope you liked the video. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And leave me a comment down below. I would love to know what are your favorite patchouli fragrances. And see you guys in the next one. Bye.